Good day everybody and welcome back to the X Explorer for one more video. I promised a little while ago that I'm gonna come back and make a video about the way I'm calculating uh, coils and resonant circuits. So basically today I'm gonna take a, as example the, the Sputnik region receiver and uh, I'm going to calculate a coil made on a PVC pipe and also on a, on a little toroid. Um, in this case a 350-2 so we are going to need a variable capacitor uh, by the way thank you Nigel uh, <laughs> for a bunch of capacitors that he sent me that I can use for all sorts of projects so a resonant circuit basically is the coil in parallel with the variable capacitor and usually we place another uh, capacitor in parallel which will be the band spread capacitor so anyway uh, let's not waste the time. Uh, let's jump on the laptop and uh, see the way I figured that it's easier for me to calculate uh, coils and uh, resonant circuits. Okay, so uh, let's make things very, very simple. I'm going to go on the coil32.net uh, so, um, website. And if you go and click on the download tab um, in the menu, you'll go to the downloads. Now you pick the version that fits your computer. In my case, it was a 64-bit um, version for Windows 10. And uh, you install that one. And once you're done installing that one, you're just gonna open the software. And um, first we're going to try to find out the LC circuit, the resonant frequency of our circuit. So basically we're going to say that we know the capacitance and the inductance. Uh, we don't know them, but we're going to find out. Let's guess, right? We're going to put 5 microhenries and 100 picofarads, which will be the spread uh, band spread capacitor. We're going to calculate and it's going to tell us that it will resonate on 7.118 uh, megahertz. Well, that is not quite enough for us, uh, so we're going to have to lower the value 4.7, I guess. No, 4.8. Okay, this is more acceptable. So with a 4.8 microhenries inductor, we're going to resonate on 7.264 megahertz. That's acceptable for me. I know that the band spread capacitor is 100 picofarads. Now, what I'm going to try, I'm going to try to find out is the value of the variable capacitor that I need uh, for this. So, what do I need? I need to go just a little bit under 7 megahertz. So, I'm going to make a guess here, uh, knowing that the variable capacitor on the Sputnik it was somewhere around 10 picofarads. I'm gonna put about 108 okay let's try a little bit more 109 okay so with 9 picofarads variable capacitor I'm going to be able to tune the receiver between 7.2 and something and 6958 so I'm pretty happy I can cover the entire uh, 40 meters band the amateur radio portion and uh, both SSB and CW. So what do we know? We know that we need the band spread capacitor of 100 picofarads. We know that we need a variable capacitor that is somewhere around 10 picofarads and an inductor that is 4.8 microhenries. Cool. Now we're going to try to uh, calculate the coil. So this one already copied the um, the details from, from these calculations and all we have to put is the diameter of the coil the PVC pipe coil in my case is 13 millimeters I'm going to put 0 0.4 millimeters wire and I'm just going to click here once and it will calculate the thickness of the wire together with the um, enamel um, layer here usually I click this one that I know the former diameter and the wire diameter and copper. So when I'm going to click calculate 
it's gonna tell me 4.8 microhenries frequency somewhere around 6.958 diameter 13 millimeters wire diameter 0.4 blah, 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 all the details and the result I need about 20.2 uh, 7.6 turns well I guess 20 or 21 turns you get to pick uh, remember the coil in reality will never be uh, as perfect as we calculated it on the on the paper so uh, we might have to do adjustment after that uh, if you want more more details you can read uh, in here it's going to tell you the self capacitance the coil self uh, coil self resonance frequency uh, coil constructive uh, q factor it's about 145 loss resistance and you know all the other uh, things so um, yeah this is the way we calculated the PVC pipe coil. Now let's get back and try to calculate the coil that we need for the um, for the toroid version. So I'm going to go on toroids.info website and I know that my coil will be built on a T50-2 toroid. I'm going to go back again to 7.2 uh, megahertz. I'm going to check that I have a band spread capacitor of 100 picofarads and I'm gonna click calculate it's gonna tell me that I need uh, an inductor uh, with a value of 4.89 uh, micro -Henry's. it's gonna be about 31.6 turns so I guess 32 turns um, if the value we have to adjust the value of the inductor we might have to just spread the turns on the toroid or tighten them together which uh, tighten them will increase the value of the inductors of the inductor um, or spreading them it's going to lower the value a little bit so we calculated this one now um, we're going to do the same test uh, so we know that it's uh, in micro hands we need 4.89 I'm going to click copy clear this one I'm going to put the value in here and I'm going to click here 7 megahertz I'm going to click calculate again and it's going to tell me the same 31.6 turns but this time I am going to sh it's going to show me uh, show me in here that I need 106 picofarads so we know that uh, for 7.2 megahertz we had 100 picofarads in here we have 106 that means again a capacitor that is a variable capacitor that is about 6 picofarads and we're going to use something around uh, 10 picofarads I guess so yeah that's uh, the, the simple simple way of calculating resonating circuits and um, um, uh, coils for for region receivers or direct conversions receiver or whatever other project you might need of course there are formulas behind there's a lot of theory behind of how you can calculate it you have formulas in here all the time and it's going to explain you but uh, sometimes we're not trying to you know uh, learn all the theory that goes behind it we just want to build a quick uh, receiver that uh, will actually work on the desired band that we want to and I think this is the easiest way. In time, we have time to to also learn and understand how how all these things work. But uh, sometimes, uh, being successful in building a one radio project that actually works the way you want it, it will change things for you, just as it did for me. Uh, actually, the Sputnik region receiver made me get back into the amateur radio hobby, and uh, probably a year later, I had my license and look at that just because of a successful uh, radio project I ended up uh, becoming an amateur radio operator so little things can do a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of stuff um, for for ourselves uh, let's take another example let's say I want the frequency of uh, 3.8 megahertz and I'm going to put here on the picofarad 220 as the um, how do you call it the band spread capacitor so I'm gonna click calculate it's gonna tell me that I need 40 turns so I guess I'm going to need uh, to use a thinner wire and the value of the inductor should be 7.97 almost 8 microhenries 
<clears throat> now what we're going to do we're going to click this one uh, let's see the value of the capacitor needed for uh, 3.5 uh, so we're going to clear I'm gonna go to micro Hendry's paste the value and here I'm going to put 3.5 megahertz click calculate and it's gonna tell me again I need 40.3 turns and the value of the uh, capacitor should be uh, 259 so now we just uh, take 259 minus 220 and the result will be the value of the variable capacitor that we need for the circuit for the um, 80 meters band and that is how you calculate a coil for the 80 meters band for your Sputnik region receiver <laughs> so a uh, couple of more tricks let's go to the to the website in here and if we go on the Sputnik region receiver and we take a look at the schematic you will see that instead of a variable capacitor I use this diode tuning right and uh, this diode tuning will also actually replace the, the variable capacitor this is the band spread capacitor but together with the band spread capacitor and the variable capacitor I also use the trimmer um, in here on the diode tuning I also use the trimmer um, resistor in series with the um, with a multi-turn potentiometer that I'm using for for tuning so with the way I've made this is just because sometimes I cannot just be perfect by in making the coil in practice right in theory on paper everything is perfect but then when you go in practice the value might be slightly different and just because I did not have a, uh, an LC meter to measure the exact value of the inductor to know exactly where I am I made this uh, to be easy uh, for anyone to adjust the receiver uh, without uh, extra equipment so let's say you have at least a frequency meter if not maybe uh, another receiver or something that it will help you to tune the the receiver but the way I've made and designed the whole circuit here, the whole resonant circuit, is that I will take the multi-turn potentiometer, I will go all the way to the left where I know that I should be somewhere around 7 MHz, and then I'm going to play around with the trimmer uh, resistor until my receiver reads on 7 MHz. Then I'm going to take the multi-turn potentiometer, go all the way to the right when I know that I should have 7.2 MHz, and adjust it, uh, adjust the receiver on 7.2 MHz using this um, a trimmer capacitor. And then of course I will have to go back all the way to the left where should be uh, 7 MHz and I'm going to double check that it's still on 7 MHz. If not, I'm going to do little adjustments using the trimmer resistor. And now my receiver is set between 7.2 uh, <laughs> sorry, 7 uh, to 7.2 MHz. And uh, yeah, that's the, the simple way. You can do this with the region receivers, direct conversion receivers, and whatever other tuned secrets that you might have. Maybe you can calculate a VFO that you want it to resonate on a particular frequency. Basically, the theory uh, of the resonant circuits, it's uh, pretty much the same. As far as I know, remember, I'm not an expert. I'm just uh, like uh, somebody who's just passionate about uh, building stuff. I don't know uh, a lot of theory behind. I want to learn and I am learning, but uh, sometimes I don't have the time to research uh, all the theory that goes behind the circuit or why we have to build things in a certain way. I'm, I'm just trying to build a receiver that will work on that particular frequency that I want and I'm going to um, use these online calculators that will help me figure out things very, very quick. All right, so uh, I guess that's it for today. Uh, this is the easiest way that I could find to, to calculate resonant circuits and coils using these uh, two uh, calculators, uh, depending on the type of the coil that you want to build. But uh, yeah, if you want to build your uh, project or your receiver on a different band that maybe you found the schematic online, you really like it, but you want to build it for a different band, this is the easiest way to, to recalculate that circuit for, um, for a different band. So anyway, I hope you found the video useful. Thank you so much for watching 73 and have an amazing week.